Good afternoon. Welcome to Holy Mass at St. Joseph's. The entrance hymn is number 833. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. And let us together turn to Jesus Christ, our Shepherd and our King. And as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, 
us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadows. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely, he shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the day. shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The TV is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
It makes me to lie down on the sofa. It leads me away from the faith. It destroys my soul. It leads me to the path of sex and violence for the advertiser's sake. Even though I walk in the shadow of Christian responsibilities, there will be no interruption, for the TV is with me. It's cable and remote control, they comfort me. It prepares a commercial for me in the midst of my worldliness and anoints my head with secular humanism and consumerism. My covetousness runs over. Surely ignorance and laziness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of wretchedness watching TV forever. Yeah, I didn't know whether to laugh at that or cry at that or go back and forth between the two. Apparently, you didn't know either. Well, it was actually written, as far as I can tell, by a former professor down at Mount St. Mary's in Emmitsburg, uh, Father Tommy Lane, who is an Irish priest. I think he went back home to Ireland, though, because of COVID. Now, just like most people, most of you, I imagine, I like TV. If you pressed me a little further, I tell you I like the Weather Channel. Of course, you'd know that. <laughs> I like the news. Yeah. I like HGTV. I like the Food Network. More and more, I'm finding lots of videos on YouTube and Facebook that I just find so interesting and funny sometimes, right? And over the summer, when things are supposedly slowing down a little bit, you know, I find myself indulging a little bit more. Perhaps you do too. So what's the point of that spoof that I started with? Now, obviously, you can directly tell it's meant to be in light of the psalm we just heard today, Psalm 23, which probably is the most popular scripture in the entire Bible that most people know to some degree or another. But instead of the Lord God Almighty being the shepherd, obviously, it's the television that is the Lord of self-satisfied couch potatoes. In previous years, when I'd go away on retreat, I would often go up to Mount Savior. It's a Benedictine monastery outside of Elmira, New York. And one of the ways that the monks there uh, support themselves is through raising sheep. And during my daily walks, it seems like I couldn't get away from these things, like they were everywhere. <laughs> Walk up a hill, sheep. Walk down a hill, sheep. Walk on your way to the chapel, sheep. So I got to observe these animals quite a bit, and I learned quite a bit about them. And I learned how much we are like sheep. You've probably heard that before. I'm sorry to say, but sheep are not the most intelligent animals on the farm. They're not the stupidest either, by the way. But they do rank below pigs and cattle in intelligence when it comes to farm animals, animal husbandry scientists tell us. So when it comes to sheep, again, they're not the smartest animal in the farm. If they try to get through a hole in a fence, let's say, and they're kind of stuck or they're too small to fit through it, you know what they're going to do? They're going to keep trying and trying and trying until they finally get through the fence, even if they're stuck. Ever find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, hoping to get different results? Gee, that sounds familiar. Maybe like I said that a couple of weeks ago from the same pulpit, the definition of insanity. Also, what else? Sheep are followers by nature. So if one sheep moves instinctually, the other sheep want to move as well, even though if it's not a good decision. But they stay together because of this herd mentality. You've heard that as well before. To protect them, safety in numbers, following the other sheep. Maybe you've heard the expression before, just because your friend jumps off a bridge doesn't mean you have to. I think it's probably good advice for sheep as well. 
The next one's a no-brainer of how much we're like sheep. Sheep will run away from what frightens them. Now, by nature, sheep are grazers. So when an attacker comes like a wolf, they have no other option, really, but to flee. You've probably heard psychologists speak about the fight, flight, or freeze response when a trauma assaults us. Well, for sheep, it's more like flight, flight, or flight. That's their options. But we do the same thing, adults and children alike. You know, we end up running away from what attacks us or scares us, whether physically, but often emotionally. I'm sure the list could go on and on and on, and I'm pretty sure there's a book written out there by someone who's talked about all these finer points of how sheep and people are so much alike. But you get my point. We're so much alike. We even wear their wool sometimes. And like sheep, us people have to have a shepherd. It's just how we are. It's etched into like our DNA that we need to follow someone or something. Now, obviously, in Psalm 23 today, we heard sung, the Lord is my shepherd. God is meant to be the shepherd of our lives. But let's be honest with ourselves. Is God really always the shepherd of my life? I mean, do I have multiple shepherds that I follow? And follow one for a little bit and then another one for another? Who or what is your God, your shepherd? I think this is important for us to be honest with ourselves. You know, is it TV? Is it social media? Is it music, Netflix, sports, my hobbies, pop culture, the kids at school, money, pleasure? getting ahead. Who or what are you letting shepherd you? And where is that shepherd leading you? That's the question. Is it to restful waters? Or is it leading you, whether slowly or quickly, away from God and your faith? Here's what God has to say about false shepherds from our first reading today from Jeremiah. Woe to you shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. Yeah, God is a zealous shepherd for us, his sheep. And he doesn't want to see anything leading us away from him. He wants to draw us closer to himself. So don't be fooled by any wolves in sheep's clothing, these false shepherds, whether people or otherwise, that aren't leading you closer to God. There's only two options, being led closer to God and led further away from God. And there is only one true shepherd, there's only one God who was sent to rescue us from our foolishness and our sheepishness and our bad decisions and our tendency to run away from what scares us. One true shepherd. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. But fortunately, we have Jesus, the great shepherd, who wants to keep us safe in the flock of his church, and he calls us to stay close to him. God bless you.
My friends, let us now together stand and we profess the words of the Nicene Creed and pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come as travelers in a desert, now placing our cares and concerns before our loving God. For the holy shepherds of the church, that they may tend God's flock with vigilance and integrity, so that no one need to fear or tremble and none will be missing in God's sight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who shepherd the nations, that they may be righteous, governing wisely and doing what is just and right in their lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we, who, that we who are led by restful waters, guided safely through the dark valley, anointed with fragrant oil, and giving overflowing banquet in this Eucharist, may respond with trust, obedience, and thanksgiving to the care of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lost sheep, those who have wandered far away from the life-giving waters of holy sacraments, that our prayers and our love and gentle inspirations of the Holy Spirit may bring them back. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our intercession, the sick, the poor, the hungry, the grieving, the most forgotten little ones in our midst, that Jesus may call them apart to rest for a while at the feast of his loving compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary R. McCoy, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, and for Janine Carrier, mother of parishioner Don Carrier, who died recently, for all the intentions in our prayer basket, as well as those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God, who sustains your people, hear our prayers. By the power of your Holy Spirit, heal our world. We ask this in all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Together we sing number 622, number 622, beginning with verse 2. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, 
who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The People's Antiphon, number 665. Oh, Lord, you are the same. 
of joy in your presence. At your right hand, at your right hand, happiness forever. Oh, Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcements. Looks like it's going to storm anyway, so we'll take a little extra time. You don't want to run out in the rain. Our mental health group will meet Monday, July 19th at 6.30 p.m. in St. Hubert Hall downstairs. Please note that there will be no daily mass this Wednesday here at St. Joseph's. Also, the obligation for Catholics in the Diocese of Harrisburg to attend Mass in person is being restored, effective August 15th, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. However, those who are seriously ill or have a serious health risk are still dispensed. See our parish Facebook page or website for Bishop Gaynor's full letter. 
This date, I think, is really providential, not just because it's the celebration of our blessed mother who's cared for us with her maternal love in the midst of this pandemic, but also because at the 5 p.m. vigil mass on October 14th, we've planned for some time now to celebrate a welcome back event, which coincides with our parish festival. This year, our annual parish festival will take place here on Saturday, August 14th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. As in previous years, we'll have lots of wonderful things, our variety of ethnic foods, activities for children, live music, lots of other good stuff. But this year, additionally, we'll have some very special activities that I'd like to tell you about. The 5 p.m. Mass on August 14th will be a special Mass to acknowledge and remember various aspects of this pandemic and to celebrate God's providence through it all. Also, just prior to this Mass, there will be a special candle lighting liturgy. Each family will be offered a special luminary bag, which will be made available after Masses the weekend of July 31st and August 1st. For those unable to pick them up then, they'll be available in the parish office the following week. You're invited to decorate these luminaries in a symbolic way and then bring them to the Mass on the 14th. Each family will then place their luminary before the altar as Mass begins. And finally, there will be a special time capsule to mark this period of history. You're invited to include something that expresses your experience of this pandemic, perhaps a short letter, or maybe a picture drawn, or a photo taken, or something else that you think would be meaningful for a future St. Joseph parishioner to see when the time capsule is open. Please drop off all time capsule items to the parish offices by August 1st. These will be reviewed for appropriateness and then included as space allows. A special time capsule dedication ceremony will take place at the end of the festival. Also, please note that catechists are needed for seventh and eighth grades for religious education and also